Okay, welcome back to part two of uh, software testing uh, in Agile development. So uh, this is part two of a four-part uh, series. I hope you watch part one. The second part is on uh, extreme programming and uh, what some of the misconceptions are of Agile. So, uh, so what is extreme programming? Uh, XP is uh, a set of practices, it's a set of principles for uh, how we write software. It is not specifically about how we manage projects, it's more about um, working at a sustainable pace, uh, how people should treat each other, uh, cooperative development, pair development, test-driven development. When people talk more about development practices, they're talking more about XP practices than they are about Scrum or Agile. Uh, so, XP uh, is a set of practices that was first developed in 1996 by uh, Kent Beck and uh, published in, in 1999. Uh, I think it's important to remember that this was published in 1999. That's uh, 11 years ago now. So uh, this isn't new. Agile's not new. Uh, uh, Scrum isn't new. Extreme programming's not new. Uh, there's a, a, a gigantic number of companies that are trying to move toward being more agile and, and using extreme programming practices, but, uh, but it's not new. So uh, many of the practices that we're going to talk about, like the first one that we're going to talk about is unit testing. Uh, and test-driven development. This has been around for a long time. There's, there's nothing new about unit testing. I think since the first person wrote a line of code, they probably tested it themselves at the code level. That's unit testing. And many of these extreme programming practices, uh, particularly testers, testers knew that these were great practices to get uh, a higher quality software product delivered uh, and faster. So um, many of these extreme programming practices have been around for a while and testers have been suggesting them. Uh, or, or at least uh, saying we should be doing more unit testing. So um, uh, that more companies are using XP practices is great. It's great. I think it's, I think it's a very good thing. So uh, XP, if you go in and uh, read a book on it or go and read some papers on it, it's 14 principles and 24 practices. Uh, but the most significant change from a traditional development mindset is the emphasis on testing. Uh, I already briefly said uh, test-driven development unit testing, uh, that uh, the foundation, a foundation process in uh, practice in extreme programming is unit testing is a significant leap forward. Um, I was reading an article by somebody the other day and they said that in the, in the age of extreme programming developers have been test infected. That uh, developers now know that they have to do uh, a significant amount of testing on their own if we're going to be releasing a greater customer value faster. So um, the emphasis on testing is important here. So we have unit testing. What is unit testing? Uh, unit testing is testing done by developers, uh, usually outside the context of the running environment, uh, most often done not through a user interface. It's done through uh, in some kind of framework like JUnit, uh, the most popular one out there now. Uh, so if I'm a black box tester and uh, I'm narrowly focusing on testing one isolated function, that's not unit testing. By, by anybody's uh, definition, that's not unit testing. Uh, unit testing is done by developers at the code level, not through the UI. So to, to get that point uh, out straight, this is testing done by developers, not by testers. So, so what is unit testing? Very briefly, uh, the great analogy that I use for unit testing that's a common analogy people use today is unit testing is like a spell checker. Unit testing will, will check the spelling of a word. Uh, the, it'll make sure that, the, that that individual isolated chunk of code works the way the developer designed it. But that doesn't mean that it's going to work in the context of the running environment. It's not going to cooperate with all the other modules. So if we go back to the uh, spell checker idea, unit testing is like running a spell checker. That word could be spelled correctly, but it doesn't mean that the sentence is going to make sense. It doesn't mean it's the ideal word to use in that sentence. It doesn't mean that every reader will understand it. It doesn't mean that it's punctuated correctly. It only means that that individual isolated chunk of code is spelled correctly. That, that, that it, uh, it works in isolation the way the developer thought. So unit testing is great. It, it, it will have a profound uh, impact on the delivered quality. But it doesn't mean that you don't need to test that function again. It doesn't mean that that replaces what a traditional black box tester would do. It has its limitations. So we have this idea of TDD, test-driven development, or test-first. Uh, 
uh, people use a couple of different names for that test room development, test first idea. What is it? Uh, it is that I could sit down and I could say, well, I have to write a piece of code. So here's how I would test it. Here's how I would validate that this code is doing what I think it's going to do or what I hope it does. So I start with a test and I run the test. The first time I run the test, it fails because I haven't run, written the code yet. Then I write the code and I run the test. If the test passes, that piece of code is done and then I write another test for the next piece of code. If that test fails, I go back and I keep working on that code until I get it to do what I set out in my test. So test-driven development is, um, it puts forth an idea that we're going to be writing testable code, we're going to be writing clearly understood, clearly defined code that satisfies a, uh, a unique goal. And that goal is testable and verifiable. Uh, unit testing is, is a great topic to have a bigger discussion on, uh, but if we're talking to traditional black box testers, it's not something that we, uh, we don't write those unit tests. But we're going to talk about them again in a little while. The next step in uh, the, the, the idea of, of testing, the next practice that we talk about is uh, we have these user stories that we talked about in Scrum that uh, we talked about in the first segment. Uh, an XP practice is that we validate every individual user story. Now, if you go and read a book or read some papers on extreme programming, it will say that that validation might happen by the business, it may happen by the product owner, it may happen by the customers themselves. It doesn't specifically say the developer does unit testing on the code and then the tester tests it. Uh, that's not what it says. So these, these user validation, these user story validations, uh, not being specif specifically done by a black box tester, could be done by the business. So uh, we need to remember that for later. That's not something that is traditionally done by us. Um, or I shouldn't say traditionally, it's not in the new paradigm, it's not done by us. Uh, but also, that is a very specific, well-understood test. If I get a user story that we all discussed and we all talked about and we estimated it and sized it and we talked talk significantly about it, I know how I can automate that test, or, or somebody knows how they can automate that test. In the most successful uh, organizations that are, that are Agile, they're writing automation to automate the validation of those user stories. We'll remember that for later on as well. So when we talk about testing in XP, we have unit testing, like spell check, small granular level uh, at the code level, and then we have user story validation. That's almost like a user acceptance test that a business might do at the end. So it, it's, it's validating the, uh, the user story itself. In most XP organizations, that's all we think about uh, in testing. There have been some people who do talk about uh, QA in XP or, or uh, what the role is of a traditional tester in XP. And in most of the main uh, literature on uh, XP, the role of a tester doesn't exist. But, for example, Ron Jeffries uh, does talk about the idea of uh, functional testing, the, a QA role. Um, not too many companies use that QA name anymore for, for uh, what test engineers do, um, but this idea of functional testing. And what uh, he suggests, and he's written a couple of uh, books on uh, uh, extreme programming, is that there's a separate phase at the end of the development phases where testers will do uh, bigger, longer tests like user scenarios. They'll do more end-to-end -end testing, but there'll be a separate phase, not during the development phase. So this will be after the, uh, the development, if we're going to combine the the Scrum and XP words, after the development sprints, then the testers will do a functional QA. They will do bigger, longer uh, scenario type tests, uh, more, a more profound testing job, uh, but during a separate phase, not during the development phases. Many organizations do do this. Uh, there is some discussion to be had about whether the tr there is a role for a traditional tester during these uh, development sprints, but many organizations, regardless of that discussion, do have a separate sprint where they're doing environment testing, when the whole product is done and they're not going to be doing any new development, they may be doing some bug fixing, but we may be doing security testing, performance testing, environment testing, where we have to have the whole system already built, we're not doing any development, that that might be the QA sprint where uh, maybe a full regression, 
happens only during that phase. But again, on self-directed teams, and depending on what practices you implement, that is not a uniform uh, practice that is prescribed in uh, XP. So that, that's a good suggestion, but it also puts testing at the end of the development cycle, which is kind of what we do in Waterfall now. The developers develop and they get everything done, and then they hand it over in system testing or whenever uh, uh, you get it on your team. But the development is done. We're going to have less impact on the product as it's developed. So, so where you fit in uh, as a traditional tester in those development sprints or in a final sprint is really going to be up to the practices that your company implements. So uh, I do want to put out a word of warning here for a minute that when people use words like QA or functional testing or regression, these definitions have all been turned on their head uh, in, uh, in this move to Agile. Uh, I mentioned during that uh, first video about, about what Agile is, that people talk about uh, artifacts and people talk about um, uh, the, the types of meetings uh, that you have using very different words. Um, Stand-ups or daily scrums. We don't call it a project meeting anymore. Some people call it a daily scrum. The glossary is very, very different in this new Agile world. So words like uh, acceptance testing, regression, validation, um, QA, functional testing, they get tossed around and thrown around because there are no definitions. There are no definitions in Agile, Scrum, or XP of what um, of what regression is or what acceptance is. And, and the words are kind of tossed around uh, more liberally, I think, than they have been in the past. So what smoke is, what acceptance is, uh, you know, we don't even use the word build validation anymore. We're going to, we use the word, the phrase continuous integration that we'll talk about next. But um, smoke testing may be a thing of the past. That notion of smoke testing may be gone. So be careful about the words that people use about uh, acceptance or um, validation or regression, functional testing. They're, they're interchanged a little bit too much. So we have this other idea of continuous integration that I want to talk about. It's a key concept in uh, extreme programming. So continuous integration does not mean that we're continuously integrating. Continuous integration is a practice where you have some kind of tool, like the, the most popular tool was cruise control, that there's a, there's a new tool called cruise that people use, but cruise control, bamboo, uh, there's a hundred tools out there. You can just go do a Wikipedia search for continuous integration and you'll find a giant list of these tools that do continuous integration. So what do they do? It's a tool that ties into your source control uh, that every time we get a new piece of code checked into uh, source safe, or you can have it scheduled every morning or every night or do daily builds or two builds a day, however you want to schedule it, uh, a continuous integration tool will rerun all of your unit tests. It'll have an interface with JUnit where it can rerun every single one of your unit tests. It can, it'll have an interface that you could have it run every one of your GUI tests. If you have a, a big automated suite of uh, test through your UI, or you have uh, even just a smoke test, uh, your current build validation test. You can have those rerun through this continuous integration tool, and at the end of this whole process of whatever testing you want to execute, uh, an email could be generated to everybody on the team that says, these are the pieces of code that changed, uh, these are the unit tests that got run, this is what passes, what failed, these are the GUI tests that got rerun, this is what passed and what failed, and it's build number X, and it's located on this server. So it can tell you, it can do the, the whole kind of build process. It's an automated build process that some companies have been doing for a while, but it can also rerun all of the automated tests. And in many successful organizations that have implemented XP, uh, the test team takes that over. It's not, these continuous integration tools are uh, not the most sophisticated tools. You don't have to be a developer to be able to manage the rerunning of builds and, and rerunning of uh, unit tests and, and GUI tests. So, um, continuous integration is a key concept for testers uh, that this gets implemented on your teams because in, the, in this need for speed, if we're taking you know, month-long development cycles or, or three-month-long development cycles and significantly compressing them to two-week cycles or three-week cycles or four-week cycles, um, even though we, we don't have the scale of development that we would do in a, in a, uh, a quarterly release in one sprint, it's much uh, more narrow functionality that we'd be developing, we're still going to be releasing a lot of builds. We're still going to be uh, putting out a bunch of software on a daily basis. 
and to have to go and manually do a build validation test, uh, to rerun a smoke test, to uh, manually move, make a build and move it to a server or, or whatever your build process is, is really going to take too long and it's going to be creating too much spin and bookkeeping on, on your daily product uh, work that we don't have anymore. With these compressed cycles and need for speed, that build process needs to be automated. And it is a big step forward uh, for the whole product team when we can integrate the unit testing and whatever GUI testing we have. So continuous integration is a key concept to, uh, to implement.